Welcome back. It's a bright, beautiful summer day. It's in the 80s. And uh, I got my buddy with me here. You know, just about uh, five days ago or so, he uh, passed his first anniversary since he had his uh, major splenectomy, his spleen removed when it was about the size of a grapefruit. He was full of cancer, and um, he was given only a couple of three weeks to live. And you saw him on a video that I took down uh, since, where he was literally dying that day. Uh, it was a, sun a Sunday day. And um, I received literally hundreds of prayers. About 350 uh, people wrote to uh, my wife and me uh, and uh, expressed their uh, condolences and their concerns and their prayers for Benny and for us. And he rallied that night at midnight when I took him out around the back corner of the yard. I'll never forget it. Uh, I was literally uh, trying to drag him around with a leash so he could, you know, uh, relieve himself before he went to bed. And uh, suddenly he just perked up. And uh, he's been that way ever since. Uh, he's been out hunting, and he just had a, literally a miraculous recovery. So, you want to go underneath the porch? Yeah, it's kind of hot out here for him. He's a he's a fair weather dog. He likes it when it's um, he likes it when that fall weather is in. It's not too cold, not too hot. So anyway, what I want to talk about today, you wouldn't think that this would be on my mind because uh, here we are in the beginning of August with such heat and, uh, you know, I'm sweating right now. But uh, pretty soon, you know, just as we've been seeing the uh, back to school ads on TV and everything, uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be getting those fall catalogs, you know, so you can start picking out your uh, fall hunting gear. So our thoughts will start turning to deer hunting. Now I've received a lot of requests from people um, asking what I consider to be uh, the ideal deer rifle and deer rifle and slash cartridge combination. So I'll answer that question uh, by going through uh, the various, the various uh, things that I think are, that I deem to be um, essential and also preferable. Now I'm not going to be talking about the all-around rifle. I'm not going to be talking about the rifle that can be used for, for antelope and for, for mule deer and for elk uh, and for, you know, for bison and anything else, I'm, or caribou, I'm going to be talking about the all-American deer rifle, the rifle which is classically used to take uh, white-tailed deer. And white-tailed deer being what they are, they're a woodland creature. They're highly camouflaged. I mean, they can, they can hide practically out in the open uh, in, the, in the woods. Uh, you know, they, they, they can stand there looking at you and you you really you're looking at them and they're looking right back at you and they're standing right there and you say that's actually a deer and you didn't really you know because they the the uh, I'm gonna let Benny in for a minute I'll be right back so as I was saying you know deer are fabulous at uh, concealment and uh, and uh, keeping cover between you and them when they were in the woods um, now my favorite, my my favorite type of hunting is uh, still hunting. Now I've I've tree hunted and stuff like that, you know, climbed up at a tree stand, and things like that. But at my age, I'm I'm a little bit leery about uh, climbing up beech trees anymore and sliding down in the middle of the morning. So uh, I I tend to favor uh, just relaxed day out still hunting. And for those of you who don't know what still hunting is. It's a it's a contradiction in terms, I suppose, because it, you're 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 not really still at all. You you're moving through the woods uh, quietly, uh, as as quietly as you possibly can, because deer uh, have tremendous sense of hearing, and they'll hear just one one twig uh, break, and they'll turn to look and see what that twig what what that break was, and they'll they'll watch it, and if they see movement after that, they're just on their way, and you'll never see them. So. Still hunting is a, is a challenge. It's, uh, it's, it's hunting on your feet, and uh, it requires that you, you're on your feet for hours at a time, and uh, you, you want to have a rifle which is you know, lightweight and gets around easily, that you know, it's, it's tough enough to be moving through with branches in your way and things like that. You don't want to have, you don't wanna have anything that's uh, overly cumbersome. So lightweight, uh, sleek, that uh, moves through the trees and branches easily and doesn't pick up uh, leaves that get stuck in places on your rifle. It should be nice to 
nice to hold, easy to easy to uh, handle, and uh, swift to get up uh, to shoot. The uh, the cartridge should be adequate for the job. What's the job? Well, that's to take a deer down in his normal habitat. The average uh, the average American white-tailed deer is taken within 30 yards. That doesn't say at 30 yards, that's within 30 yards. Sometimes much, much closer, five to ten paces away is not uncommon for a white-tailed deer to be taken. Um, so a cartridge within 30 paces or so is sufficient. And one which will on demand to be able to reach out uh, across the occasional meadow or across a, a you know, a power line or something like that, 150, maybe even 175 to 200 yards, a cartridge that has that, that sort of flatness and tra of trajectory that can get out that far. Uh, and not only get out that far, but have something left uh, to do uh, the damage is necessary. And as I've spoken about in a previous video, the, uh, the and you can watch that so I don't have to go on about that in depth right now, but uh, you want to have a cartridge which can drive a, a bullet of adequate sectional, of good sectional density, clear through on a broadside shot or an or oblique angle from any direction and go clear on through, uh, collapsing both lungs and uh, opening, the, uh, opening the thorax with an e exit wound which will uh, deflate the lungs, which will collapse the lungs because the lungs remain expanded due to the vacuum which exists in the thorax and in, inside you know you've got the uh, you, you've got the uh, it's a silver skin that lines the inside of your uh, the, uh, the the pleural uh, skin is what it's called and that silver skin is basically like saran wrap it it, it keeps it keeps that vacuum uh, where the lungs exist once that's violated with a sufficiently large hole, the lungs would just drop down and collapse. Now, an entry hole is not sufficient to normally collapse lungs. Yes, you may, you may damage and destroy the lungs. Uh, sometimes a very rapidly expanding bullet will destroy one lung, but it won't reach the second one. And so you have a deer that can still run on one lung, and uh, that's, that's not necessarily going to get your deer uh, home quickly without a lot of searching. Um, so you want to have a cartridge that's able to uh, punch right on through with, with uh, good reliability with a bullet of good sectional density, which is above .240. Then you want to have, you want to have uh, a, a gun which is simple. You don't need to have, you know, for that type of hunting, you don't need to have uh, optics. Optics have there, there, are no, there are no practical use uh, in a woodland situation. Uh, they, simply, they simply offer nothing but a cluttered field when you put a scope up, even, even a very low power scope. When you put it up and you, when you look through, uh, you're going to see magnified leaves and tree limbs and uh, branches and things like that. And it's hard to find the target that you're looking for. You know, you may see the deer out there and you put the scope up and all of a sudden you can't exactly see where he is. Time is of the essence with a white-tailed deer. You know, the next thing you're going to see is the white flag go up going this way, and you'll, you'll only see it for a brief second before it's gone. Uh, lots, of, lots of shooters have, uh, you know, shot in vain at that fleeting uh, white flag. You know, that, that white flag is not a good target. You're just, you're wasting your ammo. Now, I personally believe this is always, uh, you, you've, you've seen my videos uh, if you've been watching. You know, I'm a pragmatist. I believe that uh, there's, with, with, a, with a world of cartridges and rifle options that we have, uh, there's no need for compromises. We don't need to be searching for almost good. We don't need to be searching for something which is adequate. We can search always for something which is absolutely perfect, which is letter perfect for the condition. So as I said, the condition that we're shooting for literally, uh, no pun intended, is uh, to take down a white-tailed deer in his environment, which is in woodland, within 30 yards and possibly out to 150, 175 yards if necessary, which is a rarity. So let's look at, let's look at a popular option. Well, here's the uh, AR-15. This is mine. I don't want somebody to write in and tell me, you know, I'm, I'm an old man and I'm not up to technology. I've been carrying one of these around since 1960s. 
uh, which is uh, right after they were first introduced. So uh, technology has been with me right along. Uh, you know, I've been following it right along as, as time goes on. And I own this rifle, and I own it because I enjoy shooting it. I, w I don't waste my money on something I don't enjoy. So I thoroughly enjoy this rifle. But as an eight-and-a-half-pound uh, gun with... Uh, no matter what cartridge goes in it, except maybe the 50 Buell for something like that, yeah, you know, it's either, that's, that's, you, you, you're trying to, you're trying to stick a, a square peg in a round hole. This is, this is not light to carry. Eight and a half pounds is not a light gun. If I shorten the barrel, then I'm shortening my ballistics. I'm, I'm reducing my velocity. Uh, it doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't care since, ever since the 60s, ever since I've been carrying it, no matter what I do, it's it's just not comfortable to carry. You know, it's 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 a chunk of it's a chunk of metal uh, that's designed for what it does beautifully. It's a good it's a beautiful combat arm. Uh, it's a beautiful self-defense arm. It's absolutely uh, elegant for those reasons, and it has uh, it has superior firepower. Uh, those are all those are all things you need. But I have yet to see a deer that needs more than one or two shots to uh, take it home. So. Firepower is a moot point, um, and not only that. You know, for for those of you who may not be aware, most states, and and in this state included, uh, deer hunting is usually restricted to uh, if you're using a semi-automatic rifle uh, of only five rounds. So uh, that kind of obviates that. That kind of uh, dismisses the entire issue of having you know the the firepower. Uh, and we're not talking about hogs here, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're not talking about multiple shots on hogs, we're talking about a deer rifle. Let's go to the next option, a popular option, and one that I've shot, that I've shot my own deer with uh, on a number of occasions, and that's a scoped bolt-action rifle, the all-purpose rifle, and that's what I have here. This is my 257 Roberts. I've had, I've had guns set up like this in 270. I've had them in 3006 and 308, and it goes on and on. Um, 2506. So uh, you know they all they all do essentially the same thing. They're fabulous all-purpose uh, rifles that that can you know you can you can get on a plane and you can go any place in the United States and you're handily equipped uh, for the task at hand, no matter what the no matter what the job is, and they work for a deer rifle. I've taken my, my deer with these. And I've also carried these around still hunting and they're a nuisance. I'll be flat out honest with you, they're a nuisance. Branches get caught underneath the scope here. You get leaf sticking up in your way in your field of view when you go to put your scope up. Uh, the, first, the first little bit of uh, snow starts coming down and now you got to throw a scope cap on it, or you got to put a boot on it, or something like that. And then you got to deal with that. If if you have to shoot, you know, you got to flip those caps or whatever. Um, they're not rain friendly because the rain accumulates, droplets of rain accumulates, and you can't see through them anymore. They're fog proof and waterproof, but uh, they're, they're not. And you know, if you're walking through the woods stuff drops on them. You know, the, the scope, you have to keep that scope guarded so, you know, you're walking through the woods always constantly trying to guard it from having, a, you know, uh, stuff fall on your, on your scope. So you don't need to have a scope. And, you know, even at the two power setting, when I, when I look over there at those woods, which are, you know, those woods right there, uh, looking across my yard, about 35 yards away. Now I can, I my my field of view is reduced by about a hundred percent when I put the scope up, and I'm really not seeing much more than I'm really not seeing much more than about uh, eight or nine feet across, and that's barely enough to uh, try to find a deer if he's even if he's moving if he's standing still that's a problem enough. So anyway, it's it's okay if you if you're looking for all-purpose rifle, it fills the bill. But we're talking about a a specific deer rifle, uh, white-tailed deer rifle. It's not a specific white-tailed deer rifle. Here's one that's, uh, we'll say it's warmer. Um, this is my wife's uh, 243. Now she's not a, she's she's not a big on still hunting. She likes to just sit on a log and and uh, wait. So you know the the scope is of no issue with her, and this is a one one and a half power scope. So it's got a big wide field of view. Uh, that does that does a nice job of, of finding a deer. Um, 
And this is a setup that I used. This is the same setup I used on my 7mm 08, my Model 7 Remington years ago. Uh, it's a nice, it's a nice setup. And again, uh, it's a good, it's a good solid combination for uh, a semi-all-purpose rifle. Right? In other words, it's a rifle that uh, can be used, uh, you know, for, for pretty much anything in America. Uh, even with a, sh you know, short 18-inch barrel, uh, this this will reach out and do an adequate job on uh, antelope and things. It's not, it's not a perfect rifle for all occasions, but it's adequate. Uh, I'll give it, I'll give it uh, three stars for uh, for a deer rifle. Five stars. This is what I give five stars to for deer rifle. Now you might say, well, gee, that's an old relic, and you know why would anybody want one of these nowadays? Because you know they just there's so much more out there that we have to choose from, and this is a this is a pre-64. Pre-1964 model, uh, 94. Um, yeah, it's it's old. You know what? The deer were no harder to kill back. Uh, you know they're no harder to kill now than they were back in 1894, when the rifle was invented, in 1895 when the cartridge was invented. Um, deer go down very well with this. They go down. They go down uh, very easily. Why is that? Well, contrary to all the nonsense that you'll hear from people who don't know any better. Uh, the 170 grain bullet, which is uh, loaded for the 3030 cartridge, um, it's got a it's got a sectional density of superb numbers. It's it's not in the 240s. It's in the 250s. I think it's 2.256. Very high sectional density with the 170 grain bullet in the 3030. Um, and that means it can drive right on through, and it does drive right on through on broadside and uh, angled shots through the uh, through the brisket, and uh, and it has it has good it has not just adequate it has very good power. Uh, and for the white-tailed deer, it doesn't it really you can't you can't kill them any deader than you do with the 3030. Now there are other cartridges that reach out farther, but again we're talking about the specific deer rifle. For the person who's hunting in the woods, uh, where your shots are taken at uh, typically within 30 yards and generally no more than 100 to 150 yards, so it fills that it fills that niche perfectly. As you can see, uh, it's, it's sleek, uh, it's, it's it's lightweight. That rifle weighs less than six and a half pounds. It probably barely gets up to six six and a half pounds when it's fully loaded with uh, with seven rounds. You know. Anybody I anybody I hunt would would laugh if I were to shuck out you know that number of rounds of the rifle at the end of the day you know they'd say you know they'd they'd have no clue what I was thinking of um, you know usually I carry one or two rounds in the magazine beside the one that's in the chamber and that's sufficient um, the game's all over with one shot um, let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the cartridge for a minute now here's the this is the 32 special. Uh, and uh, it's it's uh, identical in form to the 3030 case. Matter of fact, if you look at this one right here, this is in fact a 3030. This is a 3030 head stamp, and that 3030 head stamp is easily converted to 32 special simply by running it into a 32 Winchester special uh, die. And the opposite is true too. You can take 32 special. Cases and you can neck them down to uh, 3030. Uh, it's a very handy affair. The, hundred, the 170 grain bullet in either cartridge is a, a fabulous deer slayer. Now, people in the Northeast, some people in the Northeast have traditionally favored the 32 Special over the 3030, just because it's a little bit bigger hole diameter. Uh, you know, getting through and uh, a little bit, it, let, it lets a little bit more uh, blood and a little bit more air into the. Uh, thorax uh, so it's, it's kind of always been uh, it, it's been a cult favorite for certain people uh, obviously it was not it was not a, a hot seller for Winchester because they discontinued the round I should say they discontinued the uh, the chambering uh, when they converted from the uh, pre-64 model 94 which is what that is I think that was made in 1953 if memory serves me um, 
but they discontinued the chambering in 1965. Now, I'm, I'm delighted to tell you, if anybody who likes the 32 Special, uh, Winchester just reintroduced, it's the FN, you know, Fabrique Nationale just reintroduced the uh, 32 Winchester Special in a new offering of the uh, Model 94. Uh, it's made in Morocco, it's made in the Morocco plant in Japan, and I've, I've seen the guns. I mean, the, the action is just as slick as could be. I mean, they're technologically uh, very, very nicely made guns. Uh, I've, I've never seen a prettier Model 94. They're not cheap. They're not this, they're not this $65 gun that that was back in uh, the early 50s. They're now, I think, running around $1,400 list price, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, but for anybody who wants to have a new one, uh, the, the 32 Special is back. It's a great, accurate round, too. Uh, the, um, the round is a, a, about 100 feet per second faster in all loadings than the 3030, and that's because uh, just physics is applied here. When you have a larger bore diameter, uh, they become a little bit more efficient, and uh, you, can, you can put more powder in it. This, it generally holds about uh, four, three or four grains more powder uh, for equal bullet weight in the uh, 32 over the 3030. Uh, and that, that gives it a, a little, like I say, about 100 feet per second or so higher velocity. Um, the 3030 uh, with a 170 grain bullet runs about uh, 21 to 2200 feet per second depending on the loading. The uh, 32 Winchester Special runs 22 to 2300 feet per second depending on the loading and the barrel length. Um, and then there are certainly there are there are other options with uh, with the lever action. You can get the 4570. Uh, you can get uh, 35 Remington. That's a that's a uh, all time favorite. The 35 Remington is is a 200 grain bullet uh, that runs about 100 feet per second slower than the 3030. Uh, it's a it's a it's a good powerful round for uh, close range for anything up to and including moose. Now people have taken a lot of people in Maine and have taken and New Hampshire have taken uh, moose with uh, 32 specials and even 3030. So uh, it, they're not they're not uh, they're not inadequate for the job. They're, I would not classify them as being powerhouses in that regard. But the 35 Remington is a uh, is a good is a good powerful round that has a heavy bullet with a broader bullet diameter that that uh, that 35 caliber will certainly get the job done now a certain caveat the the 35 has uh, you know being a being a bigger diameter bullet and flying along in, in excess of 2,000 feet per second uh, you want to be sure you, you're hitting the lungs because uh, I was once my wife and I were once given a deer that had been hit five times with a 35 Remington, and I don't think we salvaged 15 pounds of meat from that deer. Uh, that that deer was one bloodshot mess. Uh, he wasn't the best shot in the world, and he was shooting at a deer that was running about uh, 35, 40 yards from him. He just he he hit him in a different place every time he fired a shot, and the the deer was literally bloodshot jelly when we took his hide off. It all the parts just fell in different pieces. So. Uh, you know, it's 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 a round that'll cut a deer up very well, as will any as will any high velocity uh, rifle round. So that's important to always strike through the when you when you're shooting at a deer, any game, it's through the lungs. You know, you want to destroy tissue, but it's lung tissue you want to destroy. You don't want to be you don't want to be hitting in the in the you know a muscular tissue because that's that's your meat. The other cartridges, you know, the 45, 70, it's a great round. It's a, it's a it's a round capable of taking bison and pretty much any other animal on the planet. It's it's uh, far more than necessary for a, for a deer rifle. So if you're just shopping for a deer rifle and that's all you're going to be going after, you don't need to use that amount of raw materials in order to take a deer down, and you don't need to you don't need to put up with that kind of punishment of your wallet and of your shoulder unnecessarily unless you unless you just happen to enjoy that sort of sport. Um, the 35 Remington, as I say, is a good is a good option for a, a powerful round. Recoil is up considerably from the 32, and it's and it's up considerably more than the 3030. So if you're recoil sensitive, I would not recommend a 35 Remington uh, because they they do they do give you a good solid punch. Uh, 32 Special, it's a fabulous round. If you find an old one hanging around, they're they're wonderful, super accurate. Uh, they have good ballistics, almost identical trajectory to a. Uh, 3030. 
and the 30, the all-time 30-30 is is it's a super deer round. Uh, it couldn't be it couldn't be better. And when I say deer round, I'm also talking about for the you know for if you run across a black bear too. That's where the 32. That's where the 32 and the 35 were favored by people in New Hampshire and, and uh, Maine, and I think probably even upstate New York and stuff is because it's that it's that occasional bear that you could run into. Uh, that that extra that extra bullet diameter uh, was served you well. Now, what's the typical trajectory of a 3030 uh, 30 and a 32 special and a 35 uh, Remington? Well. I like to refer to the old trajectory charts, which were totally different than the, the uh, charts that you see these days. You know, these days, they, as, they, as you go down the column, they all have a, two, they all have a, a 100 yard zero, they might have a 200 yard zero, and they might have a 300 yard zero and everything. And that's okay, uh, and it'll show you, you know, what the, what the height of the trajectory or uh, its drop after, after it's uh, zero. Those are okay, but there was a more efficient manner of expressing it years ago in uh, in ballistic tables. They used to illustrate ballistic tables and according to um, midpoint trajectory. In other words, uh, what what the bullet was doing, some place between you and the zero point. Uh, so a thirty thirty had a midpoint trajectory at one hundred yards of one inch. And a 32 special and a 35 Remington had a midpoint at 100 yards of approximately one inch. I think the 35 Remington was a midpoint of one and a half inches. And I'll explain that a little bit. The, the rifle has to be tilted a little bit more upward by raising the rear sight so to loft the bullet up a little bit higher. So the, uh, the 35 Remington has a little bit uh, faster drop, in other words, drop from the bore. But the midpoint at 200 yards with a 30-30 uh, or 32 special was four and a half inches with open sights. In other words, right off the right off the top of the barrel. Whereas most of your uh, ballistics charts these days, uh, giving the trajectory from a one and a half inch uh, plane from a one and a half inches above the bore line, which is where typical average scope is mounted. So. But if you're looking at the if you're looking at the trajectory of a 3030, midpoint at 200 yards is four and a half inches, and the same with the 32 special. The uh, the 35 Remington, I believe, is about five or five and a half inches at 200 yards, which is beyond. You don't want to be shooting at anything beyond 200 yards with with any of those with any of those rifles. Uh, those cartridges are just they're 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 at that point. Uh, you know they're. Their energy is failing uh, because they have they have a poor ballistic shape. Um, these these bullets do not have do not have superior uh, ballistic form. Now, you'll say, what about the what about the Hornady lever revolution bullets? Well, I've I've got those. These these cartridges made by Hornady are very. I find them in my rifle to be very very accurate. No more accurate than the uh, my hand load of spear loads, uh, but they do have that polymer tip which allows them to be uh, loaded uh, end to end in a tubular magazine without a, without worry about uh, chain detonation, uh, which can occur if you load pointed bullets in a, a tubular magazine. Um, they don't cycle as slick as slick in this model 94. Uh, I haven't tried them in a I haven't tried them in a 336. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I did. I had a I had a 336 30 30 and I had the same issue they the, the, the point of the bullets seemed to catch as they were uh, going up the uh, going up from the magazine tube to the uh, chamber so they work okay I mean that's rather a non-issue because uh, you know you're, you're only firing one shot and he's going down you know all the muzzle loaders in the world know that you, you shoot you shoot the deer and he goes down you don't have to reload but uh, so it's it's not it's not a big deal. They they're just a little bit hokey getting in. They don't necessarily yes they 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 increase the the you know the mathematical trajectory is uh, flattened by using those pointed bullets. That I there's no question about these 165 grain bullets. The mathematical trajectory is flattened, but that doesn't make the rifle any more accurate. Um, 
you know, the rifle, the rifle has a accuracy. That rifle right there, it's a, it's a superbly accurate rifle. It, it, it has a, it has a accuracy of a, around about two and a half to three MOA. That means three inches at a hundred yards. So, you know, I've got to, I've got to put all my, I can put all my bullets basically uh, onto the palm of my hand uh, at, at a hundred yards, and that is, that is super good accuracy for a deer rifle. But because of their poor ballistic form and, and, and their lower uh, velocity and everything else, the time of flight, uh, that, that, becomes, that becomes a six inch circle at 200 yards. Now that's from a bench, remember. So everything is magnified when you're shooting from your shoulder or shooting from your knees or shooting, you know, sitting down or whatever or shooting over a log. You know, what, it, what is this big at 100 yards, you know, shooting from, shooting from your hip becomes maybe this big at 100 yards, and it becomes this big at 200 yards. So you can see what happens. So, uh, you know, notwithstanding the fact that they have uh, superior ballistics on paper, uh, you're dealing with a rifle that, uh, you know, doesn't give you, it doesn't give you a guilt edge accuracy uh, beyond 150 to 200 yards. So always keep that in mind and be sensible. So I would say that for the person who's uh, outfitting himself with a uh, with a Model 94 or a, a 336 uh, or maybe a Henry rifle of the same uh, chambering, you know, whatever whatever ammo is the most accurate in your gun, go with that one. Now, what about the? You're probably saying I've been talking about the 170 grain bullet in the 3030 and the 32, but why am I not talking about the 150 grain bullet? Because it goes faster. It's a faster bullet. Yeah, it's 100 feet per second faster. Uh, but Jack O'Connor wrote many years ago, back in the 40s, that it has neither the, uh, the sectional density nor the velocity to uh, be a good penetrating bullet with uh, deer-sized game. And uh, I have to agree. The 150 grain bullet works just ducky with a, three, with a 308. It always worked just perfectly with a 300 Savage years ago, and certainly with a 306. And that's because of the brute force involved. We're talking about uh, velocities which are you know six, seven, eight hundred feet per second faster uh, than the 3030, which will drive that bullet through by by sheer force of energy. The 3030 is not possessed of that sort of brute force. It has it has good solid energy with a 100 170 grain bullet, and with that sectional density of 0.256, that thing is going to keep on chunking right on through. Uh, it, you know, it's got it's got good locomotion getting right through tissue. 170, but with the 150 grain bullet, that energy fades very quickly in, in heavy uh, fluid tissue. So you're not going to necessarily have the bullet energy, uh, I should say, the sectional density to, to adequately penetrate through on uh, through and through. So you're going to have a bullet which will, you know, get into the lungs and it will disrupt and disturb them, and the deer will certainly die. But if you've been using the 150 grain bullet all your life, and your dad told you that that was the one to buy and everything, and that's what your uncle Fred uses. Try the 170, and I guarantee you're going to see a, a superb improvement in the way the deer go down. The 170 is the way to go, and it carries better at all ranges. So it's uh, you know, ballistic charts don't tell everything. They only tell the they only tell the speed and the the energy, but they don't they don't tell you what actually occurs through tissue. You know, if you look at some of the 306 uh, offerings, the 220 grain bullet with that huge long. Uh, sectional density bullet that in in some cases that has lower energy than bullets which are you know a hundred grains less so you know energy energy figures can be deceiving and I have I have a whole video about uh, energies and everything that, that is somewhat revealing so anyway I think I covered pretty much all this stuff about the oh I left one of them out uh, the 44 magnum is a popular is a popular uh, cartridge for the deer rifle that was my first. That was my first um, deer rifle that I purchased with uh, paper route money when I was a paper boy back in when I was uh, in the '60s, and um, so I bought a 336 Marlin. It had just come out in the uh, 44 Magnum chambering, and it was uh, Marlin. Soon discovered a few years later that uh, it, it it was problematic because it had to have a little flipper on the top of the on the top of the follower, uh, the carrier, I should say. To prevent the, the short round from going too far back on the uh, carrier, so um, it uh, 
it didn't it didn't uh, always chamber well and sometimes rounds flopped out of the side of it and everything so they went back to the model 1895 after a while uh, and discontinued it but so I'm familiar with the, the 44 magnum in the in the lever action uh, it's adequate for 50 to 75 yards I wouldn't try to stretch it beyond that um, it's a uh, it, you know penetration is a so so with a with a bullet that's 240 to 265 grains or so because the sectional density is very low it's a fat bullet it's a heavy bullet but it doesn't have much it doesn't have much sectional density and the velocity you're talking is still a pistol cartridge it's a, it's a revolver cartridge which uh, doesn't have that much sustaining velocity so uh, all that said, it's it's a great it's a great deer round for virtually any deer hunting, especially for a person who like like I was when I was in my youth. Uh, you know, I I could shoot I could shoot a 44 Magnum uh, very handily, and I was still a little bit scrawnier uh, than I would need you know need to have behind a 3030. So um, the 3030 was a little bit much for me. So if anybody who's looking for a 44 Magnum is a good offering, plus you can you can have fun shooting 44 specials in them. You have to be round nose bullets. None of the none of the square end bullets, you know, the Keith bullets and stuff will feed properly. So I think I've pretty much covered it all. Um, this is my, you know, I I've. I, I, I carry a lot of guns into the woods when I go deer hunting. Uh, just a lot of it is nostalgic. But I'll tell you what, for the, for, the pure, for the pure love of a rifle to be in the woods with, uh, it's handy to carry. It's, it fits in your hand like a glove, literally like a glove. Uh, and you can carry it in any way you want. It's warm. It's fuzzy. It's just got that nice. It's just got that nice smooth feel. No matter where it is, there's no there's no bumps and stuff sticking into you, catching on your clothes and everything. You don't you don't go to put it up and it's stuck to your shirt with some knob or dial. Uh, it's just what it is. It's a it's a beautiful handy uh, gun that'll take home the venison every day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless.